Hi, welcome back to another Heather Mac Reacts. I'm sorry, but this week y'all are not getting makeup and y'all are not getting hair. But you know what? I know a lot of you don't even watch me. You just listen to me. So sorry, not sorry. <laughs> anyway, today is Malicious Compliant Monday. And if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I post five times a week, every single week. Now, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into this first malicious compliance story. This says, my new catchphrase is not my job. Love it already. So I got turned down for a promotion recently. I was told that I get distracted too easily and don't focus on my job. I got told that I need to stop trying to run in to be a hero if I ever want to be considered for a promotion. So stop going above and beyond if you want a promotion. Right, that makes sense, okay. I was told that I need to work as directed. So for context, I have been doing my boss's work for him. When things at work get backed up, I will jump in to get things back in order quickly. My job has fairly specific jobs where we aren't supposed to change posi positions positions and we are to work as directed. I have gone to help out those outside of my job repeatedly since being hired. Oh, so being a good coworker and like human being, but you're being penalized for that. Makes sense, makes sense. My direct supervisor and manager loves it when I go out to help out. Well, that all stopped now. I even had the big boss try to tell me to help out a section that's outside my job description. My new catchphrase, my new catchphrase is, not my job. I had the bosses tell me that I am to do as instructed. I instead go to the union and get paid an extra to work in a different section. This has been the new trend for the past couple of months. And today it all hit ahead. They have only one person in receiving for a four man crew. I work outbound. They cannot force me to work receiving based on the contract. Now the bosses are working in there and grievance is being filed. The bosses have stopped working and receiving is completely backed up. I just had my manager come and beg me to help. I told him, not my job. I need to remain focused on my job and not try to be a hero. Like y'all said, work has ground to a halt and the steward is demanding triple rate for anyone moved to receiving since management decided to work. Let's see how this goes. So you want me to stop helping until it's convenient for you and then you want me to help? I think not. That was deliciously, maliciously compliant. <laughs> Let me know what you think down in the comments and let's get on to our next story. This says rented a Verbo. They asked for five stars, so I gave them five stars. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to hear this one. I've stayed at some rentals that were amazing. You could tell someone really put effort into the place with the personal touches. I feel like they all tried to earn five stars and didn't feel obligated when I left a review for them. The property management company that ran the last rental I stayed at placed a sticker on the fridge so that every time you open the fridge, you were reminded to leave them a positive review. It included a helpful guide as to how appropriate, how to appropriately rate them. Five stars said somebody, something like, nobody is perfect everyone makes mistakes. There were some issues, but I'd stay here again. I'm not sure that's how five stars work, but okay. Side note, my boss had a very different opinion as to what warrants a 5.0. The place didn't deserve five stars. I was going to not leave a review because I didn't want them to leave me a poor review in retaliation. A few days after the visit, the property manager sent me an email. We're going to leave you a positive review and hope you'll do the same for us. So I left a five star review with the following. Oh goody, let's see what it says. Company advised five stars means mistakes were made because nobody is perfect. So here is their five star review. The nosy neighbors are aggressive. We were conversing on the patio at 6 p.m. when the neighbor undoubtedly repulsed by the loud laughter shouted, hey! A few minutes later, I received a text message from the property manager notifying us of the complaint and reminding us to behave. I responded with the city's noise ordinance and advised any further conversation would be considered harassment. There was no enjoying the pool on the last day before checking out as the property manager had scheduled lawn maintenance to arrive at 7 a.m. We woke up on the last day to men in the backyard with leaf blowers and lawn mowers. The property is advertised as dog friendly, but maintenance left the back gate wide open. Wow, that is quite a glowing review. <laughs> 
But hey, you got your five stars. I hope you're happy with it. <laughs> that was deliciously, maliciously compliant as well. And let's get on to our next story. This says, client, I don't like that your people have access to Gmail company. Okay. Don't you love when it's just like the O and the K and not O-K-A-Y? Like, you know, they're being even like more maliciously compliant when it's just, okay, <laughs> let's see what they have to say. Long time lurking, first time poster, English is a second language on my mobile, etc. So this has been going on for a few months now in my current company and I just realized that the story might fit this sub. I work for a company that is in the IT industry. We mostly create business related technologies. The general company culture is pretty lax, not a lot of micromanagement, extremely output based and flexible. So of course, IT restrictions in our company is kind of the same. We have access to almost everything except general stuff that you shouldn't open in an office, you know, things that are not safe for work. So one day, one of the business customers found out that we have access to our personal emails and got alarmed that employees might send sensitive information externally. Perfectly reasonable stuff. The customer, though, singled out Gmail as what he saw being accessed. So our company, of course, blocked Gmail, only Gmail. Everything is still accessible. I'm talking about full G Suite access, Yahoo Mail, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Reddit, etc. So far, I haven't heard news about that customer complaining, but again, we shall see. So you're not going to block out any social media, just Gmail. That makes loads of sense. And I'm not sure the company maliciously complied, Sounds like they just complied, but okay. That's dumb. <laughs> Let me know what you think about that one in the comments and let's get on to our next story. This says the company won on this one, but now they must suffer with all the feedback. I'm in the mood for a little suffering. Let's see what they have to say. I work for a tutoring company, which we shall call Blue. Well, this company employs a lot of tutors across many different subjects, some for younger audiences, some for older audiences. For the younger audiences, the topics needed to be reviewed are in one long chain. So think of one main heading, lots of little subheadings, and in each subheading, lots of little topics. This works great for younger audiences because there is a limited number of topics and they all kind of blend together. For older audiences, those with more advanced topics, there are four units, each with a subheading, and within the subheadings are the topics. Nothing really goes together, so you have to either have the location, the location of each lesson memorized or be quick with your scanning ability. We tutors have asked for search functions so that we can find topics quickly, but the company kept saying to use Chrome's inbuilt find function. For those that don't know, this only works to find words on the screen. The way the tutoring service is set up means that find will not find words in subheadings because they are not exposed on the screen. That's annoying. Once exposed, it will find them, but by then, what is the point? I felt like no matter what we told the tech company, nothing was going to change. So those of us with busy lives set up a list with all the topics for each of the different state curriculums in a text or word file and search that way. Okay, problem solving. I like it. It took over five years, but we finally got a search function for the topics for older audiences. We finally got what we wanted. Everything happy now? No. <laughs> The company gave us what we wanted, but did it in the most annoying way possible. They complied, but were total evil monsters about it. Now we can only have one unit subheading displayed at a time. To move from unit to unit, you have to change units in a special way, and this can take up to one minute to do so. There is a search function available, but it is total trash. To find a specific lesson, you have to type in the entire lesson name, no shortening it, so equal equilibrium will not find equilibrium in aqueous solutions nor equilibrium constants. I am not smart enough to be tutored by these people. <laughs> So thank you, Blue, for making our jobs just a little bit harder and much more painful for the clients. We totally appreciate it. So that was another one of the company complying maliciously and not the employee complying maliciously, which isn't nearly as fun. <laughs> but that's all the malicious compliance I have for you today. Don't forget, we have a playlist of like, I don't know, 
almost 10 or something malicious compliance mondays up here that you can binge please don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye